This is Beyond with Heather Tesh, where we examine near-death experiences and life itself, hopefully making this life a little better. Hello, everybody. Thank you so much for joining me. And thank you to my guest today, Ishtar. Hello, Ishtar. Hello, Heather. (laughs) It is great to have you here. You had a near-death experience when you were 13. At the same time, you were involved in a very tragic accident. And I'd like to hear all about it, but why don't you start just before that you were at a baseball game and you got injured? Oh, God. Yeah, you remember that. Yes. Uh, yeah. yeah, that was that was always the... Um, uh, like one of the highlights of the year, the start of baseball season mm-hmm. for a 13 year old kid in Wisconsin. So that was like the first, uh, scrimmage, shall we say. And, uh, the, the a fellow had a really, really hot fastball for a 13 year old and it, and it, uh, got me at just about the, the right, uh, place. I didn't know it was uh, broken. So I went and pitched the next inning. Uh, with a broken, with a, with a broken arm. And I was like, oh, that felt kind of funny. So then, uh, you know, the game was over. We went to, uh, went and got x-rays at a hospital, found that it was broken. Uh, I was, I was quite, uh, uh, disappointed, uh, really, really crestfallen. And, it, you know, because they said, oh, you're probably going to miss like, you know, half or two thirds of, uh, your, your, your baseball season. We're going to put a cast on you. And, uh, you know, in a, in a day or two or something like that. I was like, ah, oh, okay. So that was my big complaint. And I was, you know, kind of getting over that. Uh, uh, and then I was talking to my uh, mother uh, before going to bed and, and just somehow in the middle of our, uh, you know, everyday conversation, I just had words just basically flow into me and flow out of my mouth without me, you know, giving them, um, any thought at all. And the, and the words were, you're going to die soon. And, and it was actually, they, they were so spontaneous and, and so sort of strong that uh, it, it, it's actually kind of threw me off a little bit. I could tell it threw my mother off a little bit, which was odd. She was, a, I think, a fairly formidable person. And, and then she, she kind of took it in and processed it. And then, and then she was, uh, you know, basically uh, not for a long time, but I'll always be around as, as long as you need me. And then I was like, oh, yeah, okay. Uh, I, I reckon that's true. Uh, and th- then I just went to bed and no problem. But then when I, when I woke up in the morning, I, I woke up uh, uh, as if I was flying into my body from somewhere else. And, uh, you know, uh, what I mean by that is there's so much force that I basically sprang up from, from sleep into being upright in my bed. And I, I did that just at the moment that my parents were uh, passing outside of my bedroom door and uh, without really taking a breath i was i was basically witness myself saying there's something i need to tell you uh there's something i need to tell you and and then i couldn't remember what the hell it was uh it was as if i i just run into my body and a message had fallen out of my pocket on the way there and so i was i was really really quite uh disappointed with that uh, and they, they had to come into my bedroom and calm me down. Uh, so wow. it, that was, and that, that, that took them about four or five minutes, really. I was like, I don't know why, why I'm so perturbed. Uh, it, and they went off on their walk. Uh, I went off to school, had second to the last day of school. Those were always wonderful. Uh, you know, I wow. wasn't going to get any homework. You, you didn't do a lot of activities, no pressure. Uh, and so I was looking forward to that. Uh, came home after the school day, watched half a movie, and then uh, we, we got into our car accident, which is, you know, kind of uh, intense. Uh, we had just dropped my sister off at her uh, new place of, of work, a, a movie theater on the edge of town. Uh, we were pulling off across one of those divided highways where you have two lanes, two lanes, and then a big median uh, strip. And uh, there was one car, which I'm sure we both saw, which we easily cleared because it was, I think, going the speed limit and, you know, way back. And then there was just another car that neither of us saw. And it turned out that that car, maybe at the, t- at the time that we decided to pull out, just started to accelerate uh, uh, quite a bit. And, and so I was uh, about to say something to my, to my mother. So I, I looked to my left 
from the passenger seat and there was a you know a very big what looked like a lincoln you know one of those big wide uh gray cars uh right outside um, the car door and and obviously going very quickly and, and so it was to me it was fairly obvious that uh i re rather thought this was the end of it uh and and you know it was this, it was a certitude uh and and so with of uh, I didn't I didn't freak out, which is what I would I was expecting of myself to get afraid or something like that. Instead of becoming really fearful, I, I felt this sort of peace and calm descending in my experience. I, I had uh, I had the, a rather philosophical thought come through, which which was I, I really thought this one this one was going to go longer. You know, like thirteen isn't that isn't that you know too short for this one? You know that was that was the thought. And, uh, and, and immediately after thinking that I, I, I was, had the whole life flash before my eyes thing happen, which I was always fascinated about and skeptical of when I was a kid, I, I you know, was actually very fascinated with memory. And, and I thought, is that really possible? How could you have the entire life in just a few milliseconds, uh, go and, and, and there it was with, uh, with perfect clarity, uh, seamless, you know, with, without breaks between the, between the scenes, I, uh, in, in itself kind of fascinating. And uh, what was interesting to me at the time uh, was that it wasn't just me alone being shown a film. It was me with, uh, with a, a, a very large, clear presence. Uh, you know, you call it the higher self, call it some aspect of divinity. I, I wouldn't know which, what name to apply to that, but it was a presence I'd felt before as a child. Uh, many times, often I didn't like to feel it because it usually would come in and I'd kind of say, well, that's not going to work out. You know, and I, I would kind of just, you know, say, shut up, you know, we're going to, we're going to do this anyway. So there it was. And this time I was totally embracing it. And we, we went through my life and it would, it was showing me, I think, pros and cons. And, and, and we went through a lot of cons at a lot of places where I was petty, uh, or, you know, I was, I was, you know, holding a grudge for no reason or, uh, places where uh, out of fear I lied. And, and we, you know, we saw everything with just complete minute detail. And it was as if in the process at the same time, some sort of internal soothing balm was, was being applied and it was, it was falling off. And we also looked at, at things that showed me things that it, it thought that's more of that, you know, basically. And, and, and some of them I, I would not have remembered of, I would not have put them in that category because they were, they were very subtle. Uh, for instance, there was one of the scenes was uh, you know, me in my third grade classroom, looking out the window at the tree. And, and only I was apparently having, according to this, it, you, know, you went into the presence, you know, you, you went, you went all the way in. Uh, another similar experience was me, I think a year later in school outside on the, on the blacktop and we, we would have recess. Uh, looking into a puddle while, while raindrops were just starting to fall in. And something about that scene brought me into this deep state of inner silence and, and wholeness, which I didn't register at the time as being anything important, you know, or, 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 or profound. But in, the, in that life review, the, the, those things like that were, were picked out. Uh, and of course, had the whole interesting thing that many people report where, uh, like I remember one time I was like, thrown into a fence. I was losing a fight. We'll, we'll put it that way. And and um, uh, only I experienced that fight both from within my own body, like like I had originally produced the memory, but from also the people who, who had shoved me uh, and onlookers. But then also from the, from as if I was looking at the whole scene, also from the simultaneous vantage point of everything in the scene. So the wood chips were alive with my consciousness. The, the fence was feeling my face in the same way that my face was, was feeling the fence. The trees that were the old August 100 some year old elm trees, which were beyond the fence were, were also me. I was, I was everybody in the scene. Uh, at, at once. So that was, you know, all, all of that, of course, in a split second with the life review, because uh, at a certain point we got to the, luckily it was a very short incarnation, 13 years, you know, uh, we, we got to the end of the tape as it were. And, and all I was experiencing was undifferentiated wholeness and, and oneness. And, and uh, I had the sense even linguistically in the mind at the time that, oh my God, everything, everything the whole time was made out of love.
Uh, that was that was the thought. And in that moment of looking at a car about to hit us, uh, seeing uh, the sky and the clouds and the background of the scene, uh, I had the sense of being in everything. And and honestly, uh, up to that point, even with a certain number of mystical experiences that had transpired, that was probably the most alive I had ever been uh, in life was, was, you know, waiting to die basically uh, right, right there. And then, you know, we had impact of, I was knocked out. I distinctly remember my head going into the, uh, the, the passenger window, not breaking it, but that, that, you know, definitely uh, knocked us out. And I, I, you know, I came to, uh, you know, I came to with, you know, concussed and, um, they're, they're taking us, trying to take us out of the car and, and the, the EMTs were, you know, actually one of the experiences I, I remember the thoughts I'm having is, you know, they're really good at this, uh, <laughs> as they were, as they were pulling my body out and, and, uh, uh, you know, putting me on a gurney, I thought, wow, wow they, they know just how to handle a human body, um, uh, you know, with, with, with uh, and putting us into the ambulance and 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 there we were i didn't know um what my name was i didn't really know much about anything of the questions they were asking me but i i did know that i was with my mother that's all I, that's all i knew and and you know there we were in an ambulance and they were taking us away and uh she called my name out a couple times i answered both times that i'm here uh then then i'm and then i'm here and i'm okay and I, I think she probably registered the second one. And I only say that because her, her um, two things, because her breathing changed uh, to sort of calm and, and measured as if she was letting go, but I wasn't you know, processing that at the time. And, and at the same time, I, I felt her move past me like a wind uh, because I, I also had one of those things that some people describe where they, where they again have multi-perspectival experience. I was, down in the gurney with my head locked down and the you know the paramedic uh you know asking me questions every now and then up there and at the same time my, my consciousness was basically near the ceiling near the roof of the ambulance you know outside of the body and even even looking down at myself at at the at the same time and, and i felt my mother up there too so when she would call my name i i basically felt as if she was talking within my own consciousness uh and so when she let go i've i've it's, it's a I felt the breeze from the top of the ambulance and you know that we, we got into the hospital the rest is quite a blur uh was was a blur until we found out that my mother didn't make it which which was you know like the, the biggest uh, uh punch in the stomach with a medicine ball that probably maybe I will we'll ever experience in this life who knows uh that was very hard a, a blur of tears and sobbing as as we um you know, are, are, are brought out of the hospital. And really, I think more or less a blur of, of just sudden impact of, of grief for the next several days uh, after that. And, and it, it took a little bit of time before really, I, I think I was functioning out of, out of shock, uh, you know, and, and I, I, I thought I was still in shock for quite some time. And this, this is where, it, it, this is where I think a spiritual seeker was born, uh, accidentally because of there were qu quite pronounced lingering effects afterwards that I did not have an internal vocabulary for, except maybe shock. Because although I had been interested in, to a certain extent, mysticism and esoteric things, I was never really deeply immersed, not, not, not up to that point. So I didn't, you know, you know, have, a, have an understanding that even those things could happen in, in, in my Midwestern American with Wisconsin uh, life. And, and so uh, what, what, namely what started to happen was I, I noticed I wasn't afraid of anything, which I figured could just be simply like, oh, you, it seems you came close to death. That must be what happens to uh, everyone. Uh, but more, more interesting than that then was I, I kept feeling what I could only call joy or bliss spontaneously coming out of some nowhere, nowhere, everywhere place that was suddenly inside me. Uh, I, 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 I had a sense of, of silence of, of almost like the back of my body at times would disappear in a non eerie sort of way in an in incredibly comforting sort of way. So 
Yeah, one one of the things that that I, I noticed was uh, there was a profound, profound sense of presence, peace, and even endlessness, even in a physical way. Uh, and what I mean by that is it almost felt like uh, uh, I didn't have a back of the head anymore, as if instead of uh, being a little discreet, atomized individual, I, if I I could go into this big space and just go on and on and on and on and on. And and this would happen behind my head, behind my body and, and inside myself. Sometimes it felt like there, there felt as if there was an endless well. And I, I noticed that it's like, oh, this is very interesting. Wow. And, and so I, I started playing with it. And, you know, by playing with it, I thought like, what will happen? What happens if I really go down into this? And every time I would go into this space, uh, what a bunch of bliss and joy would kick up in my body. And, and I, was, I found it utterly fascinating. And I would, I would try to, uh, I, I would try to sort of put myself into a state of fear and I would try to sort of crinkle up and, and I couldn't do it. You know, for, for a while, I, I really couldn't manage it. And I would start laughing at, at, at how it just, just, it was hilarious to even try. So, so this was very interesting. I thought, oh, wow. I started thinking this shock stuff is wonderful. I, I, I sh why didn't I know about this? I shouldn't, I should have been in shock more often. This was, this was my, uh, what, what I was thinking about it. And, uh, you know, later on, you know, later, eventually all that, all that faded. Uh, you know, I went back to school. Looking back, I, I realized I'd been taken into samadhi. I, I'd been, I'd been taken into the peace that passes all understanding. I've been taken into that, that sort of perennial ground of being state that, that, that mystics had been speaking of. And I just didn't have any of that vocabulary, nor did I think that was accessible, uh, you know, to a, to a person such as myself, uh, except maybe in early childhood, but even then I didn't uh, think of it that way. So it, exactly that, you know, heaven, heaven or, or the great mystery was, 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 was present, uh, in, in a, fascinating sort of way. And, uh, you know, that basically lasted for about mm, three-ish months, more or less two, three months. And, it, and it, it existed at the same time that I was, you know, in a certain sense, my, the, the character, the little, the tiny self character that we all play, the uh, 13 year old boy was also going through all sorts of emotions you'd expect. Uh, of, of one who's just lost their mother. I mean, yeah, yeah, just like Elizabeth Kubler Ross uh, would would lay out in, in sort of the stages of grief, I was I was following the textbook uh, perfectly, uh, and so you know that happened. Uh, I I tried to go be the person that I was before. Uh, I tried to sort of pick up where where my life had left off, and and I really spent, uh, in some ways, I spent the better part of a few years unsuccessfully trying to do that. Uh, e even when I was successful at it internally, I felt like this is, this is not my way anymore. This is not my path anymore. And I was, I was really doing my damnedest to, uh, I, I think lead the, uh, conventional sounding conventional looking life that I had previously planned out. But all, all the while underneath there, there was kind of a mad monk, uh, and, of. Uh, you, there, there was, uh, and I, I realized at certain point, you know, I started going, I went to a metaphysical bookstore with my sister. I'd never been to one before, had never had any interest in that uh, ex exactly. I, I thought it was more about incense and wind chimes, obviously, because I'd never been in one. So that's what's in the window. Uh, and, and then I went into the back and just opened up a book at random, which was on uh, Himalayan, the experiences of Himalayan yogis opened the book up, turned to, just turned to a page and it started outlining experiences that sounded awfully familiar to me. And I was from that, I was, I was hooked. And so little by little, uh, whether, whether it was through books or spontaneous experiences or very interesting mentor, uh, mentor guide figures who sort of blew into Lake Geneva, Wisconsin on a breeze and, you know, didn't stay long, but, but they were there right when I, I, I could really, uh, use their insight uh, over the next few years. We started slowly but surely getting back to to that uh, that state that that the near death experience had ushered me into. Uh, and the more I went, I also felt there was a sense that this was. I had a sense that this is what it was all about. You know, uh, you know, there, there was always a sense that it was kind of scripted because I had a precognitive sense 
that that mom wouldn't be around anymore. And and so it it, it started. I started getting you know coming to the uh, conclusion that I I think all this happened in at least in my life uh, to push me to to push me into uh, discovering these other ways of being these inner states, these mystical states, because if I hadn't had such a tragedy, I doubt I would have, I doubt I would have gone in that d- direction so quickly. And knowing that, do you think that where you happen to be that day changed the trajectory of your life? Or do you feel like then that was all planned out? And do we all have lives that have certain at least key points that we're going to hit? Uh, I, I certainly, uh, I, I don't know all because I'd have to ask everybody, mm-hmm. but I, I, I generally think that, that most people have these nodal points that these nodal points are these nodal periods uh, that, that, okay, here's your appointment with destiny. And I, I think in some ways there might be, you know, little bits of, you know, less important uh, stuff where we can fudge, fudge around a bit. I absolutely think that was, uh, I don't, I don't think I was getting out of that. Uh, I, I, I really don't think there would, it was even a multiverse where that doesn't necessarily happen or not too many of them. So, yeah. I wanted to clarify too, you were talking about this bliss you're experiencing, but at the same time you're experiencing all this grief. So was the bliss in moments of say meditation or contemplation or, or how were the two going on at the same mm. time? Yeah, that was that was to me at the time that was bizarre uh, mm-hmm. because it, it was they were it was as if um, uh, a whole different spectrum of being had 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 opened up, and so I wasn't having to go between states. It was as if there was the choppy waters at the top of the top of the lake, and then there was the profound flows of silence and bliss at the bottom, and I was inhabiting the whole whole dang thing. And, and, and so a lot of it was simultaneous. Uh, you know, there, there was, uh, and I was, I was fully existing often at multiple points, seemingly at once in a non-confusing way. Uh, and, and so I could, I could be really in my anger as I pounded on the door of the garage. You know, it's like, how, how could, how could this happen? You know, at the same time, there was a, there was a profoundly deep part of me that was totally silent still and almost everywhere. One thing you said about your life review, which I thought was really interesting, is it seemed like those moments where you were daydreaming, when you were looking at the puddle or looking out of the window, were important moments. Yeah. And it seems like that's something kids probably don't get a lot of nowadays because we are so tied in to our phones. Oh, yeah. You know, I, I mean, at the same, yeah, I would tend to agree I'm a bit of a Luddite. So, so, you know, I've always had a wary eye of technology in this life. Mm-hmm. At, at, this, at the same time, I also have, you know, sort of a, uh, I, I do have an optimistic confidence that, um, that uh, beingness, divinity, whatever you want to call it, is, is creative enough to reach, also reach people through, uh, you know, through these you know, iPads and, and, uh, and phones and, and, and that sort of thing, if, if it really needs to reach someone. But but yeah, at the, at the same time, at the same time, I'm like yeah, it, it's it's nice to be able to look at puddles. I, I, I my, my uh, old old fashioned disposition tends to think that. W- wish that for any who who wants such an experience. During your life review, you were pretty young and you yeah. saw the events. Did you see anything in the future or get a sense afterward that you had seen some events in the future? Oh, I absolutely did not. Uh, and. Uh, nor did I, nor did I see anything really, really before or uh, anything like that. It was, it was, um, uh, there was a sense of uh, what was interesting. It wasn't specific. There was a sense of all events that have ever transpired that ever shall transpire and, uh, are, are, are right here in this, in this, um, uh, moment that there was that sense of, of, a of a total wholeness, but that's a, you know, mi- very mystical sort of experience, not, not the, no, no, no seeing the future in subsequent um uh episodes as a teenager when i would go to i remember going to like a a meet your spirit guide course i wasn't really expecting Mm -hmm. to i I said it's worth a shot and they're letting me come for five bucks you you know you know as as the teenage token teenager at the class and and i i did end up uh, flying out the top of my head 
uh, <laughs> up a tube and I found myself in a, another space and there were these beings who were talking about my life. And I, 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 I was, you know, trying to sneak a peek. I, they had some pictures up in their room and I was like, Ooh, what's that? And as soon as they saw me down there, I said like, you know, you know, good job. You're not supposed to see this. You don't, you don't need our help. Uh, you know, uh, you're, you're fine. You know, everything you need to know. And then they just pushed my head down and I landed back in my body. Uh, so, you know, I, I was, I was sort of barred access from, from, uh, uh the, the future and the past as it were. Uh, I, yeah. <laughs> and how real was that compared to your life review? That was, they were the same. Uh, I would actually describe both of those spaces and, and maybe some of the other ones, uh, in, in the way that many people do where they say it felt more real than reality. Uh, you know, when I was in those space that it was just crisper, clearer, and and then something indefinable that 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 seemed to separate it from the, the, I think my normal reality as a teenager was you know kind of muddled you, you know uh, and and with with probably too many thoughts and uh, other other things of that nature and and in those spaces everything was just you could you could hear a pin drop and and you could see for miles and it was clear during your life review it's also interesting that not only did you feel things for yourself and those around you, but you even talked about, you know, experiencing kind of how the fence felt your face yes. at one time. And then also in the ambulance, you know, you saw things from different perspectives. How does that change your view on life when you've experienced something like that? Oh God, that's a great question. <laughs> <laughs> that, that might even take additional reflection. I'll, I'll get back to you in five years. It, no, um, I don't, that, well, it, it, at the time, uh, it made me so terribly hungry to get back to that. Uh, be, because the, the, the something in the clarity, the lucidity, uh, the, the, the boundarylessness of it all, was was fascinating in a way that I can't, I couldn't even explain why the fascination was there, but it, but it made me it, it produced a, such a strong compulsion to get back to that. So that practically changed life in, in reorienting it to get more of that. Um, I think it's certainly uh, there. There were lessons of compassion that were uh, compassion and fellow feeling and and empathy uh, that that were seeping into my my experience in ways that I I was even unconscious of some of them I was conscious of other others didn't come until later and I I think a lot of those were seeds planted and or watered in, in those sorts of mystical experiences so it, you know it's it's certainly uh, you know I think I was raised a little bit judgy or maybe I was a little bit judgy and raised a little bit judgy it, I think it certainly uh, undercut that quite a bit and and started to erode that 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 sense that other people are bastards, you know, or or, or awful, or, or or this. It was in my experience that's how it played out. There was a lot of softening and and an opening uh, that was that was going on from those. And I think that's something that a lot of us can learn from those of you that have had these these experiences. Just that empathy and understanding for other people even though we haven't experienced what they've experienced, just to try to accept and understand it from them. Fast forward a few years later, I was 18 sitting in a study hall. I'd been meditating like six hours a day for a while at really, you know, going for it basically. And I remember I had prayed, you know, I wasn't, there weren't great meditations. I have to say it was lots of concentration, asceticism. And I prayed to God or whoever might be listening on my committee or whatever, like if such a thing existed, throw me a bone here, you know, tell me that I'm going in the right way. And then I was finishing up a, a, an essay and I was, I was in a little independent study pod. And all of a sudden I looked up at the wall and I was, I was in the wall and, and I was actually looking at myself from the wall at the same time. And, and it was the, the most profound sense of, of, of wholeness mixed with almost, you know, it, it would, it would be akin to psychedelic experience, uh, in, in some ways, but, you know, obviously this was uh, high on my own supply. And then I looked at the pencil to see if it would stay with the pencil. I was in the pencil too. And then I kept looking around at things to see if the spell would be broken by the next object I looked at, but it continued that I looked at a, a person that surely a person's going to break this. And, and it was what, what one of my beloved teachers and there I was in her completely. 
and and uh, I ran around like a madman at, at the at the bell, looking at all my high school classmates, and 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 awe as I felt myself looking back at my my this body through their bodies as well, all simultaneously, and yeah, that, uh, you know that that was, uh, uh, pleasing in ways I couldn't I could couldn't describe, and uh, yeah. And that is one more reason, I think, why we all should meditate, something I have yet to dedicate to enough, but something I certainly want to do, and I know a lot of others do too. And Ishtar, I want to talk to you more about meditation. I want to talk to you more about your life review and some of the other experiences you've had, but let's go ahead and take that into part two. Okay. Lovely. Okay, so this is the point in the episode where I love to ask you your thoughts. I really enjoyed talking to Ishtar in part one. And by the way, part two is going to be very different. Part one, he was really telling the story, but we have a lot of Q&A coming up in part two, and I think it's really interesting. So I hope you stick around for that. In the meantime, if you liked what you heard, please give it a like, a thumbs up. Also, if you have friends out there that may enjoy this channel, please share it with them. And if you haven't yet subscribed, go ahead and do that. And then as always, if you have made it this far, I always ask, just go ahead and put made it in the comments. I really like to hear um, from those of you that have made it this far. And again, if you have any thoughts you want to add to that, I really enjoy hearing that too. So come on back for part two. Thanks so much for joining me on Beyond with Heather Tesh. That was part one. Make sure to listen to part two. And if you liked what you heard, please hit the thumbs up button and subscribe for more episodes.